The cumulative distribution function is defined as follows. Capital P of X, that denotes the cumulative distribution function, is defined as the fraction of your data that have a value equal to or greater than X. And the best way uh, to come to understand this is to just start constructing one of these things. So I'm going to do that now. And um, then at the end, I'll, a after doing that, I'll talk a little bit about some of the mathematical properties of this and also mention that there actually are some alternate definitions for this. Um, and in some senses, this definition is a little bit non-standard. But let's not worry about that now. OK, so let's work with the same set of data as before. And here I'm going to draw my cumulative distribution function. All right. So let's start by thinking about what's going on at 5. So 5, that's the point that's right here. And I'm going to put a mark of 1 right here. Why? Because 100%, um, all of my data is equal to 5 or greater. Then if I go over to 7, for 7, I would be down, let's see, 7 is around here. I'm going to be down at 0.9. Because 90%, 9 tenths of my data have a value of 7 or greater. By the way, I can fill this in like this. It will look like a step function. Um, so for example, suppose I wanted to know about 3. Well, if I, 3, OK, there it is. The cumulative distribution function for 3 is 1. Why? Because 100% all of my data is equal to or greater than 3. Uh, what about 6? Six? 6 isn't in my data set, but that's totally fine. I can go here and look and say, all right, so 6, the value would be 0.9. Why? Because 90% of my data is equal to or greater than 6. All right, so next is 10. And you can see what's happening. I'm just going to step down by one increment each time. So there's 10. And then, let's see, 13. Be right around there. 14. And 18. All right. Stepping on down. Uh, let's see. So let's think about what 18 is telling us. Um, or maybe, sure, think about 18. What this says, okay, so this is 0.5. That means that half of my data is 18 or larger. Let's see if that's true. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yep, half of my data is 18 or larger. All right, let's continue on. Got 21, and then 28, and 32, and then all the way over here at 48, and then that steps down. So to be clear, this is a plot of capital P of X, the cumulative distribution function. Um, so P of 40 is 0.1. What does that mean? That means that 10% of my data is equal to or larger than 40, which indeed is the case. There's only 10%, in this case, one data point that's equal to or larger than 40. Uh, okay, so let me say a little bit about sort of some of the general properties of a cumulative distribution of function like this. First, we can see, uh, I think from its construction, that this uh, function can never increase. It can stay flat or it can decrease. Um, since we're, as we kind of move to the right, we're always excluding more of the data. And so this fraction is always going to go down. 
um, again, if you had 100 or 1,000 data points, this would look less like a staircase and a lot more like a, like a smooth function. There wouldn't be as many visible steps in it, typically. Uh, so let me say a little bit about um, cumulative distributions for power laws. So let's suppose that x is distributed according to a power law. So x is... So then that means that little p of x is going to be a x to the minus alpha. So it turns out that if this is true, the cumulative distribution function is also uh, described by a power law. That's if. So p of x is going to be uh, something like this, x. So a different constant here and a different exponent. So um, just to reiterate, if x is distributed with a power law, so little p of x, this probability, this histogram-like thing, then capital P, the cumulative, cumulative distribution function, is also distributed according to a power law. Um, I don't think I can really justify that without calculus. Um, I'll include a short um, optional video where one can show this using calculus. It just involves an integral. Um, but maybe it's not surprising if um, we were to have a histogram uh, that had power law behavior. I mean, this one doesn't. There's so few data, you can't really see that. But um, hopefully it's not, not a surprising fact that the mathematical form of the histogram and the mathematical form <coughs> of the cumulative distribution function um, <coughs> are related. All right. <clears throat> so there are two more things I want to mention about cumulative distribution functions. Um, so first, the cumulative distribution function is a nice, well-defined mathematical quantity. We don't need to worry about um, if it comes from a continuous or a discrete distribution. It has a value for all values of x, even x's for which we don't have a data point. So this makes it... Um, a much, uh, in many ways, a much easier thing to work with mathematically. Um, and we'll see that even more when we start thinking about how to get um, power law exponents. And you can see where this is headed. It's going to turn out to be much better to use the cumulative distribution function to estimate an exponent than the um, distribution itself. All right, the last thing I want to mention <coughs> is that this is, in some ways, a non-standard definition for cumulative distribution function. Um, this is used all the time in the study of power laws and, in general, in long tails. But more generally, in probability and statistics, I'm used to seeing this where this is um, equal to or less than. So that, um, if you've taken stats or probability, you're probably used to seeing cumulative distribution functions as the fraction that are equal to or less than some given value. So it's just a matter are you adding the of um, if you're adding the curve up from the left or sort of down uh, from, down from the right. So this is sometimes called a uh, complementary cumulative distribution function because it's the complement to the more normal or typical one. But often um, in papers on power laws, this is just called the cumulative distribution function, and that that's fine. It's accumulating a distribution, so it still is per seems perfectly fair to call it a cumulative distribution function. But be aware that um, there are alternate definitions for this, um, depending on if you put a greater than or less than here. All right. So 
that's cumulative distribution functions. Um, you can try this idea out on the next quiz if you um, want to check your understanding. And then we'll move on and talk about rank frequency plots.